Hi, and today I'll co we'll be covering Lab 1, Part 1, x86 Hand Assembly and C Refresher Lab. We're going to cover the first couple of steps as well as go over how to fill out the tracing chart. So as you can see here, I already have my virtual machine up and running. To run debug, we're just going to select the debug and we'll go ahead and see the MS-DOS prompt open up. From here, we're going to type the debug command and then we're going to we'll examine the first instruction of the dump command. The dump command is going to basically display the contents of the memory on the screen. So the first one we're going to look at is D100. And from here, we're going to go at, we see the bunch of characters display on the screen. What these represent are a couple of different things. The first left column is representing the current address as well as the offset of where we're at. The center column is representing the contents of memory. And then the third column represents the ASCII characters of those contents. So, as we examine this, DE is at memory location 100, as seen here. E8 is at 101, 45, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, all the way into 10F. So keep in mind that we are using hex to represent these values, not decimal. So this contains the address, this contains the contents at that address. Now, if we continue to examine the dump command, we can see that we can display various different sizes. If we want smaller or even larger values, it just depends what we're trying to examine at the time. Now, the next command we're going to look at is the enter command. So from here, I'm just going to simply enter the first set of instructions. So we're going to type E100. And from here, we're going to type everything in the lab document that's characterized as red. So we're going to type D8 space 20 space 01. Once we're done, we're going to press enter. Now from here, we're going to examine the next instruction, the unassemble command. So U100, and we're just going to go to 102. And as we can see, we, our first instruction is the move command, and it's moving what's called an immediate value into our DX register. Now, to save time, I'm going to show you a faster method of entering data into our debug prompt. You can simply enter the characters into a notepad, keeping in mind the white space characters. So as you see here, I entered E100, and I press enter to start a new line. After that, every time I added a new byte, I go ahead and I press space to the very last one where I press entered. So from here, we're going to highlight those characters, control C. And from here, we're going to select the paste option inside the prompt. And this go ahead, this is going to enter our data from our buffer into a prompt. Now from here to verify we entered our program properly, we're going to type the unassembled program again to 100 to 118. Now we should go ahead and see that our program should match with what we have in our lab document. Whatever is in green should match, as well as the red and blue. If, it's, if the code segment or the value in brown doesn't match, that's perfectly all right. But we really concern ourselves with what's here in the red, green, and blue. As you can see here, I'm not missing any parts of the document. And if any time you do see something is off, go ahead and re-enter it, or simply go to the address and change the bytes to the correct value. Now, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about what this program is and what it does. So some of the instructions, the first one we're using is the move DX to 120 instruction. This instruction is simply moving what's called like a constant or an immediate value into the DX register. From here, the next instruction, the move AX, is moving the contents of memory location 200 into the AX register. So anytime you see these brackets, we're referring this to this as not an immediate value, but an address of something where something is located. So whatever's at memory location 200 is going to be moved into AX. Same thing for the move instruction BX, we're going to move the contents of 202 into the DX register. The subtract instruction is simply taking the contents of AX, subtracting the content with it with the contents of BX, and storing the results back into the AX register. From here, we have what's called a conditional jump. A conditional jump means that we meet a certain if a certain criteria is met it's going to jump to this memory address. And we can see that by looking at this column right here, that 114 is the move instruction of memory address 200 from AX. So it's moving the contents of AX into memory location 200. So 
If the condition is not met for a conditional jump, what ends up happening is we drop to the next instruction, or the add instruction. Similar to the subtract instruction, it's going to take the contents of AX, add the contents of DX, and store the results back into AX register. From here, we go down to another conditional jump, jump greater or equal than, and it's going to see if the conditions are met. If not met, it's going to drop down again. Now the jump greater or equal than condition is if the value is greater than or equal to zero, or basically a positive number. If the next, con the next instruction is what we refer to as an unconditional jump. So irregardless of what any conditions are, we're going to go ahead and jump to this memory address. So as we look here, we can see that 10E is actually located at, at the add instruction. So as it drops down, if it doesn't meet the condition, we're going to jump back up and add our constant value of 120 to whatever our constant value of AX is. Once the condition is met, we're going to jump down and we're going to move the contents of AX into memory address 200. And from there, we call our interrupt command 20, which ends our program. So basically what's going on with this program is we're moving some values into some registers and from there we're subtracting the contents of AX and BX and if the result is negative what will end up happening is we add this constant value to AX from there we check the value again if see if the result is now positive if it's not it's going to go back and continue to add DX into AX until the value becomes positive once the value becomes positive it'll then jump out to the move instruction and then from there, move the contents of, into memory at memory location 200 and then finish the program. So from here, we're going to now cover how to do the traces as well as how to fill out some of the uh, tracing chart as we go through the lab. So we're going to go ahead and first look at the register modify command. This command is going to display the current contents of our registers. So our registers we're going to use in our system are AX, BX, CX, and DX. These are some of the general purpose registers and they're made up of 16 bits. So, as we go through this, one thing to take note is the AX register is actually compromised of two 8-bit registers, the AL and AH register. This is the same for the BX, CX, and DX, each of them compromised of two 8-bit registers. So the lower byte is going to be the AL register, the upper byte will be the AH register. Same thing for BX, you will have the lower byte being BL, the upper byte being BX, or BH. From here, the next set of data to take note of is the DS, which is the data segment, ES, the extra segment, SS, the stack segment, and from here, SS uh, is the stack segment, and the CS is the code segment. IP is referring to is the location that we're currently at. Now from here, this next set of data is actually showing us is, is our flags. Some of the flags that we use in x86, for instance, in our tracing chart, if you haven't noticed, is our zero flag, our sign flag, and our overflow flag. And we'll go talk a little bit about this as we fill out the tracing chart in a second. The next set is actually showing us is our instruction that's being used that's going to be run next. So from here, first we want to do is before we trace our exam example, we want to go ahead and enter some values into 200 and 202. We're going to do this by typing the E command, or E200. And we're going to type some simple values that were provided in the lab. The first one I'm going to give you is 05 space 00, 09 space 00. And from here, we're going to confirm our values were entered properly. So we're going to dump the values to 200 to 203. And now, as we read these values, one thing to take note is x86 is what we refer to as little endian. So the value, the, how the bytes are ordered are actually reversed than we normally would read them. So the least significant byte, which in our case will be 05, is actually going to be put at the lower memory address. So 05 is at address 200 and 00 is at 201. Because we're reading 16 bits of data at one time or two bytes, how, how we'll actually read it is 0005. Same thing goes for the next location for 202. How we're going to read it is 00, then 09. Because 202 is the lower address than 203, this is the least significant byte representation. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to trace through a few um, two commands. Now examining this, what we can see is after we run the first command, we have move dx 120. 
as we look at the first trace, we can actually see that 120 was entered into the DX register. Now, the memory contents of AX, or, Z, or 200, actually contains our 05 value. Now, as you can see here, AX doesn't have 05 as of yet, but it will be done after we do our next trace, as we see here, the next command to be run will be here at the next trace, and the contents become five. The next contents, BX, will then become nine after we run this command one more time. Now that we've gotten to this point, let's go ahead and fill out our tracing chart. So as you go ahead and get this from, you can grab this from the Moodle section or the x86 lab files. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start for the very first set of instructions, which is the AX. We're gonna go ahead and fill in the data. So in our case, all our values were initialized at zero. OF represents the overflow flag, ZF, the zero flag, SF, the sign flag. We're gonna leave those blank for now. For next, the CS represents the code segment, and we're gonna simply enter the one that we have, which is 0F68. This shouldn't change any time that we run our program. If our code segment changes at any point, we need to make sure we change that with the register modify command. Our first instruction is located at memory address 100, and we entered 05 into address 200 and 09 into memory address 202. Now, as we haven't moved any value into memory address or to our red general register DX yet, our instruction will be, our next instruction will be the move command DX comma 120. Now that we've done that one, we're going to enter the next set of commands. Well, well, actually, first, sorry, we should talk about the flags. So to determine what the flags are, we're actually going to go ahead and go to our x86 or Moodle page and go to our lab files. So from here, we're gonna go to the um, lab one x86 C refresher lab files, and we wanna go to the debug flag table. Now, as we see here, this document will actually demonstrate all of our flags. So we have an auxiliary, a carry, an overflow, a parity, a sign, a zero, as well as you have some control flags, interrupt, and direction. Now, as we look here and we'll look at our flags, we can go ahead and look and notice that some of the letter representations, NV, line up with what we have here in our virtual machine. The NV will be representative of the overflow as well as OV. So if an overflow condition occurs, this NV would actually change to an OV. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna record three of these flags into our tracing chart. So the three that we're concerned with is the overflow, the sign, and the zero. So as we look at our document, we can see that overflow is NV, which is here, that our sign flag is PL or NG. You can see that PL is set to zero, and zero is NZ or ZR. And we can see that NZ is right next to that. So right now, none of our flags are set or also in the reset set state. So we're gonna go ahead and enter these values into our tracing chart. So we're gonna type NV, and to make it more readable, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we enter the bit value, which in our case would be zero. The next, the zero flag, which is NZ or ZR. So currently it's not set. We're gonna hit the value zero. And the sign flag, which is PL or NG. So we look here, they're not set. So we can see that we're gonna enter PL and zero. So that's how we fill out the tracing chart. You wanna repeat this for the next following steps as you go through. Please keep in mind though that as we go through this, the buffer size doesn't allow you to scroll up in the, de um, the, pr the debug prompt. So keep, if you want, snip the data, keep going through till you finish your trace. Remember, each run goes from the first instruction, which is the move DX, all the way to the last instruction, which will be interrupt 20. Make sure that you don't go past interrupt 20 when you trace. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and keep examining our, our program a little bit more as we trace. And what we should notice is that after we do the subtract, our value becomes negative using two's complement. So here, we can see that our negative flag, our sign flag, sorry, actually changed to negative. So our condition is not met for the JGE, so the next trace will actually take us to the add instruction. 
what will happen is we're going to add the contents of dx to ax and then from there store the values back into ax which should give us a positive value and as we see our sign flag here changed to positive as well as the contents of ax is now a positive value so if I trace through it'll now show me the contents of 200 here and we're going to move the contents of ax so as we go through this document these values for 200 and 202 pretty much will stay the same but the very in the instruction before this or the move instruction 200 to ax will actually change the value at memory location 200 so after we trace this command what will end up happening and if we dump 200 to 203 we'll notice that now we have a new value for 200 so the value for 200 will now be in our case 0 1 1 C and so just to make sure you can check this periodically to make sure these values don't change but you should make sure that this value does change after you run this command and I'm sorry actually this should be one uh, command down below that so that's how you do a simple run or fill out the tracing chart for the x86 part 1 hand assembly template or hand assembly template sorry the tracing charting template so that covers the basic information you need for lab 1 part 1 if you have any questions please talk to your lab instructor and discuss any other issues or any more information you want to cover at that time if you have any if, if you have any additional questions feel free or notice something is incorrect please contact by sending a message or sending an email or contacting the CSUS IEEE uh, student chapter. Hope you have a wonderful day and look for more videos.